Hello and welcome to another Popper video. Today we're going to be a deep dive on Combotron. Uh, we're going to discuss Altertron, Eggstron, Controltron, and Familiarstron. And how it works, what the combos are in all these, and how you can implement it and uh, succeed in your locals or however you want to go. So let's, uh, we're going to start out here on Altertron, but just want to remind everybody that if you enjoy this content, check out the Patreon. I have a, no a new sideboard guide for Altertron specifically that's going to go up on the Patreon for any Patreon subscribers of the $5 and up. And then we have uh, also, if you would please go ahead and like and subscribe, that'd be awesome. Leave me a comment and uh, let me know what other kinds of videos you want to see. If you're enjoying this kind of thing versus League, maybe I could do this kind of thing more often. All right, so let's go ahead and get into it. So starting here, we're looking at the Altertron combo. How does this work? We have Ashnot's Altar, which says sacrifice a creature to add two mana. We have Mirror Retriever, which says when it dies, return another artifact card from your graveyard to your hand. So we can just go ahead and demonstrate that loop right now. Okay, so you can see here that I have Mirror Retriever in play, Ashnot's Altar in play as well. Right now I have no Mirror Retriever in the graveyard, so I'm going to sacrifice Mirror Retriever, and then I'm going to get back my first uh, anything I want. And now from here we have two mana floating. I'm just going to play out this Wellspring so that we have uh, more efficiency. What, you want to, what we're going to do is sacrifice Ashnot's Altar, and then we're going to retrieve the Retriever. Okay, so that's mana neutral loop. And you can see that what happens here is we just continuously generate storm. Now, clicking all over the battlefield here is very frustrating because you're clicking over here. This is teeny tiny. So what you want to do is pop this out, play the mirror retriever, sacrifice retriever, put the triggers window very very close to where the graveyard is, and then you can just not have to click very far. So you can see that I click here, right across. Obviously in paper, this is just, okay, I'm demonstrating an infinite loop. All right, so at this point, you have some other stuff, and we'll go back to the deck. So now that we see what the infinite loop is, how do we take advantage of that? First is Weather the Storm. Weather the Storm says you gain three life with Storm. So if you have infinite loop, you have infinite life. That's just straight up. Second thing is Golem Foundry. It says whenever you cast an artifact spell, you can put a charge counter in Golem Foundry, remove three charge counters from Golem Foundry, create a 3-3 colorless Golem artifact creature token. So this actually gives us infinite mana as well because Ashnod's altar sacrifices a creature, Golem Foundry generates a creature, and we're doing infinite loops here, which generates infinite creatures, so we have infinite mana. Obviously this is all colorless mana. Now this colorless mana works directly with Energy Refractor because Energy Refractor can convert two colorless mana to one mana of any color. So you can just continuously start looping here. So let's show you generating mana. So here we have the Golem Foundry in play. We're going to go ahead and cast the Mirror Retriever, and then we always yes, always yield here. And then we're just going to sacrifice our Retriever, get back a Retriever, and then here, sacrifice again, a Retriever, play another one. Now we have a Golem. We play the Golem, and we can sacrifice it. We have extra mana. So we haven't done anything but loop, and now we have plus two mana. Once you have enough mana, you can basically, at this point, we're going to generate infinite mana with Golem Foundry, play makeshift munitions, and then continuously shoot our opponent with the Mirror Retriever, and then play the Mirror Retriever and get it back. This is much easier in paper, because you won't have to actually spend very much mana, or you won't have to spend time generating mana. You can just say, I have this, and you win. Boom. Sacrifice. Get back the Retriever. Now, uh, this is definitely very difficult in Magic Online, but I can show you how it gets a little bit better when you have extra foundries in play. Okay, you can see that here we have two golem foundries in play, we have the mirror retrievers. I'm going to sacrifice the mirror retriever, and we're going to do three loops here. Uh, this this looping will give us actually plus four mana. We're going to always yes. Get back the retriever. So we have two counters. And now at that point we would have made a golem founder here, token here, and a token here. We can sacrifice both of the tokens and make additional mana. That gives us 
four mana here. So basically every additional golem foundry you have in play gives you two additional mana per the loops, which means that it's not actually difficult or impossible to make enough golems to shoot your opponent with makeshift munitions. So that's actually a huge bonus in this list, specifically. So what is the deal with the rest of the list? We are playing seven Deadly Disputes. We could be playing something like Faithless Looting, but I'm not playing that specifically because I think that I want to just draw as many cards as possible, and we end up wanting to have as many uh, lands in play as possible because we want to generate a lot of mana. We want to have a lot of mana to cast our spells and do our things. I think Deadly Dispute and Reckoner's Bargain is the best way to draw through your deck and get things done. Additionally, um, one of the things that I noted about Faithless Looting is it gives you, like, this is draw two, discard two, and you get to do it twice. So it's really draw four, sort of, uh, if you're pitching your lands. And we have four of those, so it would be 16 cards. But, you know, Deadly Dispute, Reckoner's Bargain, the, each of those are going to draw you three, like if you're sacrificing a Wellspring. Or it'll just draw you two off the refractor. But what you generally tend to do with this deck is bobble back one to two of these. So we have an effect of nine in the deck, plus we have Mystical Teachings to grab another one. So you're never really running out of card draw here. I think that this is probably the better setup. Now, uh, let's explain. So Conjure's Bobble says, put up to one target card from your graveyard at the bottom of your library and draw a card. This makes it so that if you have something in the graveyard, like Deadly Dispute, like I said, you can put it back into your deck and then teachings for it and draw it again, which this gives us an extra copy of Weather the Storm in the main deck, basically. So we can teachings for Weather the Storm, we can bobble it, teachings for Weather the Storm once more, and continue to go off. Frantic Salvage here it says put any number of target cards, target artifact cards from your graveyard on top of your library and draw a card. So we're able to use Frantic Salvage to continuously loop all the stuff in our deck. And if we have multiple bobbles in the graveyard, we can use Frantic Salvage to get back the bobbles, use the bobbles to get back you know, our spells, and then we'll never running out. That means that we can just play one single makeshift munitions because we can continuously recycle it in the face of counter spells. Um, generally, that covers the main deck. I'm playing two crop rotations and uh, four expeditions and maps specifically because I want to have Tron online as fast as possible, and I want to continuously make land drops until I can overvalue my opponent. I think that uh, when you don't have Tron as very quickly, this deck just flounders. In the main deck uh, lands, we have the, the Tron lands, which say when you have all of them, it makes extra mana. Tower will make three, Power Plant and Mine make two. I'm playing two Swamps here, specifically because they synergize with these Deadly Dispute Bargains, or they're able to cast it, I mean. And then Crystal Grotto is a really awesome Scry land. It says when it enters a battlefield, Scry one, and you can add you can filter for one mana of any color. We can actually crop rotation for a scry land with some sort of draw trigger on the stack, which is kind of nice. And then I'm playing one Polluted Mire. I think that it's possible that you could go up one more Polluted Mire and cut some other card. I'm not really sure what that is, but that would increase our turn uh, zero mulligan consistency and allow us to use our expedition maps in the late game to get more Polluted Mires and cycle through our deck. So generally, as you're moving through your deck, you want to be sacrificing Expedition Map to get lands out of the deck, to thin the deck, and find the things that you need to have. In the sideboard here, uh, something I was playing before was Jace's Erasure. But this is specifically good in eggs, because when you're down to zero cards in the library and you have a cost reducer, you can infinitely loop Conjurer's Bobble, getting back Conjurer's Bobble, and draw infinite cards, essentially and get infinite triggers off this to mill out your opponent. In this deck, we're actually just making infinite mana. It's much more convoluted to make infinite mana than do Conjurer's Bobble loops. So I'm actually playing Stream of Thought as a one of, which could potentially be a two of. So we can make infinite mana, we can filter infinitely to blue with Energy Refractor, and we can dome our opponent with Stream of Thought. That means this is an uncounterable win condition, which is very, very good against Turbo Fog and stuff like that. Unfortunately, it's not a teachings target, so you have to be careful to try to draw it into your hand if that's going to be your win condition. I'm also playing four Krark Clan Shaman. This is specifically to try to fight something like walls uh, and elves, and then two scatter shots. I like scatter shot in this list because you can fetch it with teachings, and it's very good against fairies. 
then Weather the Storm, Fangren Marauder, and Spellbomb. These are specifically for Burn, and then Spellbomb is for something that is like uh, graveyard based. So let's make this pile view. Mm -hmm. So let's talk about sideboarding here. We're just going to go over the main, the few main decks and uh, give you an idea there. If you are interested in additional sideboard information, I wrote up a guide that will be posted on the Patreon, and you can see that if you uh, go ahead and subscribe. So first, let's talk about burn. If you want to fight burn, we're going to be bringing in all of our life gain. And additionally, uh, we're going to be doing something kind of weird, but we're going to be cutting most of our package. This Golem Foundries and Ashnod's Altar, they're more win more cards at this point. As long as you're alive, you're not dead, and that is very important. The Mystical Teachings can find uh, more card draw, and then what you want to do is eventually get makeshift munitions in play, and then just ping off their creatures and attack them with the Fangren Marauders. But this would be the swap that I would recommend. You could also potentially cut makeshift munitions for a scatter shot so that you could use mystical teachings to get scatter shot to clear the board and then attack. I like keeping one Ashnod's altar in the deck in the main post board because you have the infinite loop combo with mirror retriever that sometimes you can luck into for infinite weather, the storm or infinite life with Fangren Marauder. We can afford to go lower on wind conditions because Fangren Marauder is a big beater and it only takes a couple of turns to close out the game. All right, so next would be Blue Black uh, Terror. And here I think we're just going to be cutting crop rotation. And probably also the makeshift munitions and bringing in three Nihil spell bombs. So this deck er, is a little bit slower, so we don't need to crop really super early. And the main thing that we really want to do is get Golem Foundries into play. When you get Golem Foundry into play, you can chump lock for a long, long time, and then you can just win the game that way. Nile Spellbomb puts them on the back foot, so if we continuously get Nile Spellbombs early, then we can make it so that they're having a hard time, and then we win the game with just eventually having infinite golems. Okay, so for Affinity, we're going to be cutting the two crop rotations, and one makeshift munitions, and bringing in three Fangen Marauders. The reasoning here is that Affinity is relatively slow, it's kind of a mid-range deck, and makeshift munitions is not really necessary. Most of their stuff doesn't die to munitions, it's only going to help us for sacrificing our Wellspring, and we're eventually going to go and foundry them out anyway. Now, if you are seeing an opponent who's trying to time you out by doing Quark Clan, Quark Clan Shaman loops, you would want to keep the munitions in, in the deck, and, or maybe like cut something else for a scatter shot because you can teach things for a scatter shot and wipe their board and then uh, go off that way. So maybe I would cut like uh, a map or a wellspring and then get the scatter shot in. Maybe even a weather of the storm. You could do something like this. Since the Fangen Marauder is going to gain you life eventually, weather of the storm is a teaching's target. Scatter shots a teaching target. We can clear their board, and then you can make infinite golems, uh, get infinite golems ready, and then on their end step, scatter shot all their quarks and attack them. That would be the plan. For our last meta deck that we're going to talk about, we're looking at call gates, and call gates is slow, so we're cutting the crop rotations, and probably just bringing in two scatter shots. One other thing you could bring in would be the Fangren Marauders here. Uh, but they have Journey to Nowheres, so Journey is not very good against, uh, I mean, sorry, Fangren Marauder is not very good in the face of Journey to Nowhere. Just want to wipe their board and continuously pump out Golems and then cast Weather the Storms and loop those, and uh, eventually they die to our, all of our Golems because they can't deal with that. Prismatic Strands does not stop Golem Foundry. If you do end up facing Fairies, you want to be bringing in your two Scatter Shots and cutting... Not really sure what you should cut, but makeshift munitions is very important in that. You and golem foundry is very important. 
So you could maybe cut an alter and cut one crop rotation just to bring in these scatter shots. You want to like bide your time, wipe their board, and attack them with golems. I think that's going to cover the sideboard discussion that I have here on this deck, and let's move into the just a quick overview of some other combos, and we'll go over the other decks. Okay, here I have a version of my Tron Eggs list, and what you want to be doing here is playing out uh, a bunch of uh, eggs, eventually getting to zero cards in the library with the Foundry Inspector in play, which cost reduces your Conjurer's Bobble, and then you can just Jace's Erasure your opponent to death. We also have Golem Foundry for making a bunch of golems as time goes on, and then you have a couple of different teachings targets. So this is basically the same as the altar list, but it's a little bit more robust and a little bit faster in the early game, so I think it's a little bit better against green decks. And I'll go ahead and show you the erasure loop. Okay, so here we are. At the end of the game, we've got our Conjurer's Bobble in play. We have Cost Reducers. We're just going to bobble back the bobble, and then when this targets our opponent, we're going to click, we're going to press the yes key. I'm not doing it right now, so I'm going to continuously press the no key. Uh, and then you just loop that way. I forgot that I had this frantic salvage on the bottom of the deck, but that is how you win. And then eventually, if you have a bunch of uh, bitter reunion in play, and then you're just looping, you can also pop out a bunch of golems, sacrifice the bitter reunion, and then they have haste and you get to attack. Okay, this is the Fogtron list that I'm not going to go too deep into, but there's a combo where if you have Mnemonic Wall and uh, Unwind and Weather the Storm and Second Mnemonic Wall and Flicker, you can actually make infinite mana with also having three towers in play. So I'll show you that here. We have three towers in play, so we tap for nine. We have 13, so we're going to make blue, Flicker here, Make a blue. Blue again. We're going to make a bunch of blue here. Because we need storm five. We're going to flicker. Get back to flicker. We're going to do it a couple of times. We're going to go up to Storm 5. Get back to Flicker. Now we're going to tap for green and blue. Cast Weather the Storm. Unwind the Weather the Storm. And then untap our three lands. Now with the Weather the Storms on the stack, we can tap more mana. We're going to unwind, we're, so we flicker our two uh, walls, and we get back unwind and ghosty flicker. We unwind again, untap all these things. We're going to go ahead and make some more mana. Flicker here. So this is generating one colorless mana per loop. But eventually we'll get to the point where we clear the stack. And uh, we're going to have a little bit more mana than we started with. We should have about the same mana actually as we started with. And then we can flicker. And then we'll have enough mana to uh, do it again. And since the next time we'll have way more storm, we'll be generating way more mana. And then that's the infinite loop. You can generate infinite mana. Then you can flicker your refractor and draw your deck. Tap, untap, untap. We're almost there. Generate a bunch of blue. Obviously, this is basically impossible to do on Magic Online. Unwind this. Untap, untap, untap. We're flickering one more time. Unwind. We unwind this. And now we have 15 mana, and that is enough to cast Weather and Unwind and Flicker for both everything. 
So we're going to flicker here. Get back weather. Get back unwind. Flicker again. Get back unwind. Get back flicker. We're going to make a blue. So now we have exactly enough mana to go weather the storm, unwind, and the loop starts again. And you can see we have 19 spells, or 19 here, so it's going to be plus 19 mana or whatever, and then the, that is the, the full loop if you're interested in doing that in paper. Definitely don't do it on Magic Online. Now the final list we're going to look at here is the Familiar's Tron, and this goes off because when you have Cost Reduced Ghostly Flicker and Arcane Mancer in play, every time you flicker... Uh, arcane answer and a tower you make mana so let's go ahead and see that so here we are we have teachings for flicker and then i'm going to flicker my two towers make a bunch of mana arcane answer gets back to flicker flicker on tower get back to flicker so every time now we have four mana Flicker, once, twice, you can see we have six mana. So we just keep making mana that way, and then eventually we draw our deck and we compulsive research our opponent. Uh, it's also very time consuming, but an interesting combo. This is a list that I've been uh, trying to work on and uh, we may see a video on in the future. If you've been in Join this, uh, let me know if you want to see more weird Tron combo, and uh, let me know if you want to see more videos like this in the future. Thanks for checking it out. Have a great day.